Ozone depletion increases Antarctic snowfall, partially mitigates ice sheet loss Ozone layer depletion has increased snowfall over Antarctica in recent decades, partially mitigating the ongoing loss of the continent's ice sheet mass, New University of Colorado Boulder research finds. The findings, published today in the journal Geophysical Research Letters, show a distinct signal linking stratospheric ozone loss above Antarctica with increased precipitation, even as those gains have been outpaced by an even greater ice loss rate due to warming oceans, contributing to sea level rise. The Antarctic Ice Sheet is the world's largest ice sheet and freshwater reservoir, containing the potential for hundreds of feet of sea level rise if all ice were to melt. Calving icebergs and melting ice shelves have gotten lots of attention because they're the most visible impact of ongoing climate change to Antarctica, said Jan Lenartz, lead author of the research and an assistant professor in CU Boulder's Department of Atmospheric and Oceanic Sciences. But the input side of the equation, which is precipitation falling in the form of snow, hasn't drawn the same level of study. An ozone hole, or a seasonal thinning of the ozone layer, forms above Antarctica in the austral summer, influencing atmospheric circulation and creating stronger circumpolar westerly winds. While previous research has outlined some aspects of the relationship between ozone depletion and the climate of the Southern Hemisphere, the new study co-authored by Lenartz, Jeremy Fike of Los Alamos National Laboratory and Brooke Medley of NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center Cryospheric Sciences Laboratory has analyzed the effect on Antarctica specifically. The results complement a separate NASA-led study, which was led by Medley and published today in the journal Nature Climate Change, which uses observations from ice cores to show that Antarctic snowfall has increased in the last 200 years and especially so in the past 30 years, suggesting that precipitation changes can be linked to human-made causes such as greenhouse gas emissions as well as the ozone hole. In order to pinpoint the effect of ozone loss on Antarctic snowfall, Lenartz and his colleagues compared two sets of eight climate modeling simulations, one set with observed ozone levels and one set with ozone values kept constant at levels before the ozone hole started, allowing the researchers to isolate the signal relative to natural climate variability. The comprehensive analysis, which encompassed the years 1955 to 2005, revealed increased Antarctic precipitation during the austral summer that can be attributed to lower levels of stratospheric ozone, and which has in part buffered ice sheet mass loss. Paradoxically, while the results suggest that ozone depletion, previously the focus of global conservation efforts such as the 1987 Montreal Protocol, helps to partially mitigate sea level rise by increasing Antarctic precipitation, those mass gains have been more than offset by increasing iceberg calving and melting. The pace at which snowfall is increasing is not keeping up with the ocean-induced losses, Lenartz said. The Antarctic ice sheet is still losing mass. How ice particles promote the formation of radicals the production of chlorofluorocarbons, which damage the ozone layer, has been banned as far as possible. However, other substances can also tear holes in the ozone layer in combination with ice particles, such as those found in clouds. Researchers at Ruhr Universität Bochum, the University of Duisburg-Essen and Friedrich Alexander Universität Erlangen-Nürnberg have discovered a possible mechanism for this. They describe it in the journal Physical Review Letters on 13 November 2018. The work was part of a long-standing cooperation between the teams from Bochum, Duisburg-Essen, and Erlangen-Nuremberg led by Professor Karina Morgenstern, Dr. Cord Bertram, Professor Uwe Bovensiepen and Professor Michel Bockstedt, which is currently being continued within the framework of the Cluster of Excellence Ruhr Explores Salvation, or RESOLVE for short. Organic molecules are deposited on ice particles. Chemical processes can significantly influence the weather, the climate and the composition of the atmosphere. Cosmic rays or UV light provide the energy to split chemical compounds. In the case of bromine, chlorine or fluorine compounds, radicals, i.e. particularly reactive molecules, are formed. These attack the ozone molecules and can trigger chain reactions in the ozone layer. An earlier laboratory study had shown that ice particles with a silver core can promote such reactions. The team investigated the mechanism behind this effect in the current study. In the laboratory, the scientists produced tiny ice particles and analyzed how certain compounds containing chlorine or bromine interacted with them. They condensed the ice particles onto copper. 
In nature, mineral dust particles, among other things, form condensation nuclei for the ice particles. Using microscopic and spectroscopic methods, they observed that the molecules preferentially attached themselves to defects in the ice structure. The surrounding water molecules of the ice structure then reoriented themselves and hydrogenated the molecules. This, in turn, made it easier to ionize the molecules in the experiment. UV radiation generates radicals. The researchers irradiated the ice crystals with the attached molecules using UV light, which excited electrons in the ice particles in the vicinity of the molecules. These excited electrons ionized the chlorine and bromobenzene molecules. Through ionization, the molecules disintegrated into organic residues and highly reactive chlorine and bromine radicals. The mechanism could explain what happens when UV light hits mineral contaminated ice, says Cord Bertram. Our results could thus help to understand the fundamental processes behind phenomena such as ozone holes. Greenhouse gas detergent recycles itself in atmosphere a simple molecule in the atmosphere that acts as a detergent to break down methane and other greenhouse gases has been found to recycle itself to maintain a steady global presence in the face of rising emissions, according to new NASA research. Understanding its role in the atmosphere is critical for determining the lifetime of methane, a powerful contributor to climate change. The hydroxyl o radical, a molecule made up of one hydrogen atom, one oxygen atom with a free or unpaired electron is one of the most reactive gases in the atmosphere and regularly breaks down other gases, effectively ending their lifetimes. In this way O is the main check on the concentration of methane, a potent greenhouse gas that is second only to carbon dioxide in contributing to increasing global temperatures. With the rise of methane emissions into the atmosphere, scientists historically thought that might cause the amount of hydroxyl radicals to be used up on the global scale and, as a result, extend methane's lifetime, currently estimated to be nine years. However, in addition to looking globally at primary sources of O and the amount of methane and other gases it breaks down, this new research takes into account secondary O sources, recycling that happens after O breaks down methane and reforms in the presence of other gases, which has been observed on regional scales before. O concentrations are pretty stable over time, said atmospheric chemist and lead author Julie Nicely at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. When O reacts with methane it doesn't necessarily go away in the presence of other gases, especially nitrogen oxides NO and NO2. The breakdown products of its reaction with methane react with NO or NO2 to reform O. So O can recycle back into the atmosphere. Nitrogen oxides are one set of several gases that contribute to recycling O back into the atmosphere, according to Nisla's research, published in the Journal of Geophysical Research, Atmospheres. She and her colleagues used a computer model informed by satellite observations of various gases from 1980 to 2015 to simulate the possible sources for O in the atmosphere. These include reactions with the aforementioned nitrogen oxides, water vapor and ozone. They also tested an unusual potential source of new O, the enlargement of the tropical regions on Earth. O in the atmosphere also forms when ultraviolet sunlight reaches the lower atmosphere and reacts with water vapor H2O and ozone O3 to form two O molecules. Over the tropics, water vapor and ultraviolet sunlight are plentiful. The tropics, which span the region of Earth to either side of the equator, have shown some evidence of widening farther north and south of their current range, possibly due to rising temperatures affecting air circulation patterns. This means that the tropical region primed for creating O will potentially increase over time, leading to a higher amount of O in the atmosphere. This tropical widening process is slow, however, expanding only 0.5 to 1 degree in latitude every 10 years. But the small effect may still be important, according to Nicely. She and her team found that, individually, the tropical widening effect and O recycling through reactions with other gases each comprise a relatively small source of O, but together they essentially replace the O used up in the breaking down of methane. The absence of a trend in global O is surprising, said atmospheric chemist Tom Hanisco at Goddard who was not involved in the research. Most models predict a feedback effect between O and methane. In the reaction of O with methane, O is also removed.
the increase in NO2 and other sources of O, such as ozone, cancel out this expected effect. But since this study looks at the past 35 years, it's not guaranteed that as the atmosphere continues to evolve with global climate change that O levels will continue to recycle in the same way into the future, he said. Ultimately, Nicely views the results as a way to fine-tune and update the assumptions that are made by researchers and climate modelers who describe and predict how O and methane interact throughout the atmosphere. This could add clarification on the question of will methane concentrations continue rising in the future? Or will they level off, or perhaps even decrease? This is a major question regarding future climate that we really don't know the answer to, she said.